Oh. Oh. <laughs> this is like old code. My name is uh, G2, and um, no, my name is not G2. <laughs> <laughs> my name at Kofferstein is G2. Um, my real name is uh, Gustav, and I work as a lead programmer here for uh, Kofferstein Studios. Why do people call me G2? Um, because I was the second uh, Gustav that started here. <laughs> That's uh, how easy it is. <laughs> <laughs> but, but you're the only Gustav now. Now, yes. Should we change it? Do you want to be G1? No. No, do you like being <laughs> G2? Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I've been at Kopfstein Studios for almost 11 years. And the first game I started working on was uh, Sanctum 2. And since then I worked on Code Simulator and now on Satisfactory. And I was a programmer on all of these games. And for the last part of Satisfactory, I have been the lead programmer. So as a lead programmer, I have a bit more responsibility, uh, like getting the bigger picture of the project and the, and the code, and planning a little bit around when we do stuff, how we do stuff, interacting with the rest of the team to try to think and find ways to work. Um, as a lead, I'm also responsible for the, the Perforce branches we have. Perforce is our version and control we use to submit our code, so we have a history of all, 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 all the changes we have. So if we are working on a new update, we might be working here, and then we are fixing bugs for the current release over here. And then those two needs to be synced. Right around the release, there's a lot of things to organize, but then after a release, it's usually more calm and I get uh, more college time to program. I do miss programming, yes, um, but I also like helping other people with the organizing stuff and make sure that they can focus on the programming. In the programming team we are seven programmers on paper, um, but we also have a tech artist who is doing a lot of programming and a build engineer, and I consider those two part of the programming team as well. For software, I use JetBrains Rider for the programming part, and then I use uh, Microsoft Paint for the art part. <laughs> uh, Alright, and what hardware do you use? What hardware do I use? <laughs> <laughs> Say the line! <laughs> A computer? <laughs> Here at Kofferstein Studios, we use uh, Unreal Engine. It was the first engine we used, so we have developed contact with uh, good contacts at Epic and continued using their products. So the upgrade from Unreal Engine 4 to 5 has been a, a big task. Uh, I think we underestimated not the upgrading of the engine, but the part of uh, uh, migrating all of our systems to some of the new systems provided in uh, uh, the version 5. There have been a lot of fixing and a lot of bugs to just fix up the content uh, when you migrate from one system to a new system. Uh, we used uh, mainly C++ for the game code and then we also use uh, Blueprint when interfacing with the UI and the uh, design team. Blueprints, uh, that is um, like code but it's a visual uh, coding language so you drag uh, lines between boxes basically and it's uh, easy to use for our designers and uh, the UI team to, to get things going. So a typical day for me usually starts with me getting to the office, filling up my glass of water, having a look at my, my teams, see if I have any messages, having the stand-up meeting, and after that it's uh, helping Jace with programming. <laughs> for the rest of the day? Yep, all day. <laughs> The stand-up is uh, where we programmers talk together and uh, we tell each other what we have been working on and what we are going to work on and also bring up any problems that would arise during the day or any questions we have about the code and the project and things like that. God Simulator and Satisfactory is very different games. Uh, I think the day-to-day -day tasks, they are, for a programmer, they're kind of the same. Um, but the challenges are a bit different. 
So GoTeam is a single player game and Satisfactory is a multiplayer game. I think that that's one of the big ones. And Satisfactory is much more scalable. The, the players can build whatever they want. And in GoTeam you, you really don't have that. Uh, GoTeam was a little bit more free as well. I mean, we could, you could add more, more stuff. Like, I have this idea and I added it into the game. Satisfactory, you, you might want to have a discussion around it first, if it fits the game and things like that. My favorite thing about programming is uh, the creativity part. Like having the feeling that, that you are creating something. You are making, making a game, you are making things in the game world come to life. I mean, you, you have the idea in your head, I want to make this feature for the game, or take for instance, I want to make trains. And that is a creative process to, to code and to create solutions for how do we have trains in Satisfactory. So the process of making trains, I was a com contributing factor to, to having that feature and getting people around, talking about how, how do we make trains, what kind of systems do we need, do we have signaling, how should the train work, and I started brainstorming on, on ideas and how we could technically solve this issue, and then also talking to, to the others involved and starting the coding, starting the people, starting the concepting, how it should look. There were some challenging parts and there is actually still a bug in one of those challenging parts and that is to get the trains to schedule correctly when you have multiple trains sharing the same tracks. Uh, they can sometimes still lock up in what's called a deadlock. So they stand head to head, just staring at each other. And that's not fully solved, but that's, that's a tricky, tricky thing to solve. It's a lot of thinking about what happens if they meet up in this way, what happens if they do this. So that, that's definitely one of the most challenging parts there. So it sounds like it should be simple. That, that, that's a big part of programming. You can have this great idea and then when you start doing it, you realize, oh, this is really hard. This is going to take some time. <laughs> some of the other features I were, was involved with is um, pipes and the power system. I think those are two, two big ones. Uh, since I've been here, since the beginning of the project, I probably have my hands on a lot of other features, but the main ones would be those. So talking about difficult issues for programmers, I think uh, the fluid simulation is probably one of the harder challenges I've had in Satisfactory. Um, me and one of the other programmers, Dylan, we have bounced a lot back and forth on, on the math and on the ideas, how do, how do we solve fluids? Like, we are not uh, physicists or scientists, but we have looked at a lot of resources online, tried to figure out, okay, how can we fake fluids in a pipe? That's, that's hard. Uh, there is an issue that I'm hoping to get some time to look into. Right now you can, you can set up two buffers. One is filled and one is zero. And then you create a pipe between them and they start flowing over. And then they go back. And then they continue indefinitely like this. <laughs> so I wanted to settle, like it goes a little bit up and then slower and slower until it settles at an equal level. That would be the solution. My least favorite aspect about programming that's a, that's a hard question. Um, programming can take time. And sometimes you have a great idea, but you realize it will take half a year to make it. So <laughs> that can be a bit off-putting. <laughs> I don't like merge conflicts, probably because I do a lot of the merges here at work between the different uh, places people work. And you need to go to the other person involved and say, what changes did you make? And which should I keep? If it's a lot of conflicts in a merge, then you might need to poke like five different people to solve or resolve all the conflicts. It's not the work itself, it's mostly time consuming. I did sign up to do problem solving and it is problem solving, so... <laughs> yes, uh, so the strangest bug is when I was helping Jace with programming. And we had a, a vehicle bug. On our test level, we have, I guess, a flat level. And we have a little ramp and some other stuff around the level. So when you would uh, drive the vehicle off the ramp in a specific way, jumping out, then the vehicle would disappear. And then you looked around like on the map and like, where, where's the vehicle? And on this level we had a portal. Just the designers were testing some things out. And when you looked at the portal and went to it, you, you saw the vehicle like coming out of the portal. 
So that was a pretty funny bug. Uh, we did track it down to some wonkiness with the math, with the, with the suspension physics that was causing the, the bounce of the vehicles. The bounce is like uh, what the vehicle is colliding with. So the physics went wrong and the bounce started to grow like this until it touched the portal and entered it. <laughs> yeah, because it was a divide by zero with a force. That's what it was. Uh, and so, so one of the forces, so the forces caused the vehicle to scale infinitely large. Yeah. Uh, and then it touched the portal and then came back out of the portal with reset physics. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> what advice I would give to new programmers or those who want to study programming? First of all, like, why do you want to learn programming? And what parts are you interested in? I would say it's the first thing to, to think about because that's going to affect a little bit where, which resources you get and stuff like that. So if you want to learn game programming, you might want to learn C++ or, or C Sharp because that's used by the two, two major engines out there. Then I would um, start with the basics, learning like the basics of the language, like what, what's a variable, what's a for loop. I would start with just the basics and do some exercises on that. And when doing the exercises, um, don't just follow the tutorial, but play around a little bit with them and see what you can do with it. And I think it's important to choose good projects to, to start and not go too difficult. Like if you're just starting to learn programming, maybe a console program to do rock, paper, scissor is a good first start. And then move on to like tic-tac-toe and then if you want to learn some some more game programming and a little bit of math going into games I would um, do something like Space Invaders or Asteroids like those kinds of games. Uh, what programming languages or what programming language you choose doesn't matter too much I would say uh, because the, the basics of programming will stay the same so if you start in one language it will be easy to learn another one. Um, but if you, if you do want to get into game programming, then maybe you shouldn't learn like a language used mainly for web development, things like that. Some languages are easier to learn, yes. Some languages are easier to get results in. C++ is um, known for being like hard and boring to learn because you spend your first hours, days, weeks, just in a console application, giving text input and text output. And that can be a bit demotivating, but I, I wouldn't stress it too much which one you choose. Is there anything that you would like to say maybe to the community? I do love your, your feedback to us developers, because I, I also play the game and I love this game. And I, I really like when I get uh, some feedback on, on the features like, oh, it would be cool to have this and this. But also getting cool saves sent by people and just be amazed at what they built. Programming is pretty cool, yes. And good luck to everyone out there who is uh, trying it out. They, and none of them end with like, bye everyone. Yeah. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah. Did someone say that? <laughs> no. No, okay. Well, we've got that now. <laughs> bye bye. <laughs>